Okay, we got PayPal. We got some tech thoughts. George Tillis joins us uh, with also maybe a little uh, little crypto chat with uh, MicroStrategy uh, reporting their earnings as well. Uh, George, let's talk uh, PayPal here for a moment. The share is not doing much. A little bit of a spike, but came back down. And uh, they've got new leadership. Uh, they've also got a new chief financial officer. Jamie Miller has been appointed the CFO. So the continued C-suite shakeup uh, in this company uh, gets an update this uh, afternoon. Uh, they have about 428 million active customer accounts uh, at PayPal. Pretty big number to get close to half a billion here, George. It does seem like it's becoming a more kind of fully integrated, seamless way to pay in today's world. But the stock, of course, has been a gigantic loser. How come? Well, I mean, uh, I think we're maybe at a pivot point, but this, the trend in the stock's just been so bad, I, I can't say what'll happen. But look, if you look at the, uh, the numbers, 428, estimates are 430, I have, 435 million active user accounts uh, last quarter. So there seems to be some decelerating trend, at least sequentially, uh, in terms of the number of active users. But I mean, just look at the total. I mean, that's a lot, 435 million and across multiple brands, which include e-commerce, uh, Braintree, which is their mobile web payments, uh, Venmo, uh, if you will, Zettle, which is point of sale software. So they're, they're actually a very comprehensive business. Uh, they are profitable as well, uh, effectively. But I think the the challenge for PayPal is it's at an inflection point. It's no longer a growth company. It's no longer it's not a value company either. So I think that's one of the challenges. Maybe analysts, maybe the market is trying to cipher out or sort out with this particular stock, in, uh, specifically speaking. Okay. You know, uh, thinking about its connection to the uh, consumer and kind of the macro situation, it does feel like, in yeah. a way, it maybe kind of has Visa, MasterCard style qualities to it, uh, you know, but hasn't traded that way. I guess it still has this sort of like growth kind of e-commerce COVID boom that it's shaken off because, uh, you know, the growth numbers here are not are not huge. Um, but the base of the customers, I mean, should this not be kind of turning into a more staple like payments business? Yeah, so I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna use another stock as an analogy. Spotify. I mean, they have um, yeah, like like over that. 500 million users. Yeah. So that's the thing. They have a brand. They have actually a very large ecosystem. They have a lot of users. There's value there. Uh, the challenge is, I think that PayPal has gone through at least in the last two or three years with the stock down tremendously. Is is it ready to transition into more of a value orientated business? From a, from a financial standpoint and even from the expectation standpoint. I mean, I haven't seen the numbers yet uh, in terms of the earnings or, or sales, but just looking at the estimates, you know, revenue is expected to be 8% higher, earnings for sure 14% higher. Uh, but if you look at their earnings growth uh, next year, the next four quarters prior to this release of announcement, only expected around 5.6%. And that's about, uh, you know, that two thirds lower than, uh, than the 17 or so percent five-year average, even sales are expected to be half of their five-year average. But here's the kicker. Their, their multiple, which was around 35 times earnings, is about two-thirds cheaper than their five-year average, right around 11 times forward earnings. So that's what I mean by an inflection point, because from a value standpoint, it's becoming, I suppose, a little bit compelling. If we just look at 5.5% EBITDA growth at 11 times earnings, it's basically two times EBITDA. Might be a little expensive for a growth company, uh, you know, uh, but maybe kind of uh, in line for a value company, I can't say. But this is, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a sort of a pivotal, I think, quarter for, for PayPal because it's starting to look compelling. The other thing is, and I wouldn't be surprised to see this, now, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but they do have $10 billion on, of cash on the books. So they may end up using that as an opportunity to buy back shares as well. That seems like maybe uh, kind of a step in the direction to exude confidence and shore up the stock as yeah. well, you know, because uh, it's really fallen off here. Payments volume came in above expectations. You know, uh, I have to say it does kind of seem like a bit of a harsh uh, market judgment on this company at the moment. Uh, maybe they'll try and uh, do some shareholder friendly activity. Let's, let's keep an eye on that. I like that point. Uh, hey, George, you want to talk a little crypto for a sec? Have a little fun? Go over to the Michael Saylor Madhouse of MicroStrategy. 
which is essentially now a Bitcoin play. So uh, Bitcoin has a good quarter. I'm assuming this should be a decent report from them. They're back above their break even. Well, it's it should be. And you're right. When you look at this company, uh, you know, it's a it's a technology access and, of course, uh, uh, cloud based business. Just look at their sales. Their sales last year, 500 million, and it's about the same as it was in 2017. So it's not a growth company, but of course, their earnings can grow based upon Bitcoin. And that's what you have to look at this as a Bitcoin proxy. Now, the company is profitable. The estimates were 69 cents uh, in terms of what they were expected to earn versus a 96 cent loss last year for the same quarter. The stock is up 190 so percent. But it looks like they came in ahead of estimates for sales. Uh, it looks like 129 was the number versus 126, about three and a half percent year over year. But the growth of the company, from a sales standpoint, um, is not very large. Uh, so it really is a balance sheet play on Bitcoin. Uh, I'm not sure of their strategy uh, when it comes to Bitcoin, whether they're buying and selling it, or if they're just holding for longer periods of time, or if they're continuing to acquire. Uh, that's something I didn't have time to go into, but ideally speaking, that's something one would certainly look into if they're looking for a Bitcoin proxy, Yeah. because the company's uh, technologies are still in demand and they are still profitable, but uh, it really is going to oscillate uh, variously or, or quite widely based on Bitcoin price. Well, they're, yeah, right now their initial investment break-even profit, the company itself still losing money, though, at uh, 140 143 million. It's pretty crazy. They did 130 million in sales and then lost 140 million total. Yeah. So it's just, it's all disappearing. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you look at last, uh, the, the last four quarters, in fact, they made 206 million on 500 million in sales, but the same 500 million in sales because their sales growth wasn't uh, growing. It was relatively flat versus 2022. In 2022, with 500 million sales, they lost uh, 1.4 billion. Mm, yeah. So Oof. just think about these numbers in the context of uh, it's a Bitcoin play. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks, George. Uh, an interesting one. Uh, I right. appreciate the thoughts and the details. GT, your man from Salt Lake.